Hi everyone, Eva here. Hope you're having a great day. So today being Friday, this is when I do my weekly Friday focus question, answering one mom's question in the My Cooking Baby Facebook community. Now, instead of answering one specific question this week, I wanted to address a topic that comes up fairly frequently, I would say in the group, it's a fairly common theme that I, I wanted to address and give my insight into. And the topic has to do with sleepy cues. So I've seen, or sleepy signs is another word for it. So I've seen a lot of, of parents write in talking about how, for example, their 10 month old is should be doing two and a, three hour awake windows, but for whatever reason, he's waking up and he is rubbing his eyes after only an hour and a half. And they're they're so as a result, they're putting their 10 month old down for a nap after only being awake for an hour and a half to two hours. And so I want to address, I guess, the the ins and outs of really what sleepy cues are and what kind of role they play or don't play in in coming up with a baby schedule. So when we're talking, generally speaking, about sleepy signs, we're talking about when the baby is either rubbing his eyes or pulling his ears or twirling his hair or begins to get cranky or begins to yawn or puts his head into a care your um, into his into your chest or a caregiver's chest and uh, and is is acting kind of tired. And the whole philosophy around sleepy cues is basically that uh, around the fact that sleep science states that when a child of any age, a baby or child of any age is beginning to get tired, it is that specific moment that you want to get your little one down to sleep because you want to avoid them becoming overtired from staying awake for too long. This is a fact. This I am not going to disagree with at all. That when your little one is beginning to get tired, it means that they need to go down and you don't wanna be keeping them up past the point of them being tired because then they become overtired. So that's a known fact. The million dollar question here is, are sleepy cues a reliable indication as to whether or not your little one is actually really getting tired for sleep? And the answer is sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. And generally speaking, I would say once your baby is at least three to four months of age and up, they should not be used as a primary factor for determining when your little one needs to go down for a nap. They're secondary. The primary factor is the wake period, coupled with the, the time on the clock. And let me explain. I know some of you might be going, might be blown away by this going, I don't understand. All I've ever read about is looking out for their sleepy signs and their sleepy cues. And are they rubbing their eyes? And the second they begin rubbing their eyes, you put them down for a nap. I hear you. And I'm sure that this advice is probably going to be very confusing. But let me explain why sleepy cues should not be your main focus. And it is because very often sleepy signs can be misleading. And I'll, I'll explain to you two very common scenarios as to when they can mislead you into thinking that your little one is tired when he's not, or it'll mislead you into thinking that your little one isn't tired when he is. So the first scenario is your little one is making you think that he's ready to go down for a nap, but he's actually not. So if you have a baby or a toddler who is for the most part, not the greatest sleeper. It takes him a while to fall asleep at bedtime. Maybe he's waking one too many times a night. Maybe he's up for big chunks of time throughout the night. Maybe his naps are really, really short. Maybe you've got a combination of these factors that you're dealing with. If your baby or toddler is not getting an ample amount of sleep over a 24 hour period, then he's likely going to always look tired. And it's not going to mean that he's necessarily ready for a nap. It just means that he needs more sleep over a 24 hour period. So just because your 10 month old is waking up and rubbing his eyes an hour and a half later, it doesn't mean that he's actually ready for a nap. It just means that he needs better nighttime sleep. And so then that's when you kind of want to take a few steps back and go, okay, 
why is my 10 month old not sleeping nearly as, as well at night as he could be? You see, there's two types of tired signs here. One category of tired signs does legitimately tell you, mommy, I'm tired, put me down for a nap. And then another category of signs will say, I just need more sleep. I'm just exhausted because I haven't slept enough over a 24 hour period. And when your baby's sleepy signs fall into the second category, getting him down too early means that he's not going to build up enough sleep pressure to actually give you a good nap. And then as a result, you could get, end up getting a 30 or 45 minute cat nap on your hands. And then the vicious cycle continues where he's going to continue to show you these tired signs throughout the day because the quality and quantity of sleep he's giving you is not optimal. So and then, of course, you can get the exact same problem at bedtime where he's rubbing his eyes and rubbing his eyes and he's so tired. He's appearing so tired because he hasn't slept really, really well. And then you try getting him down for bed when he's barely been awake for uh, a long enough period of time. And then you're fighting him for an hour and a half to get him to sleep. So for that reason, this is why sleepy signs, I'm not telling you to necessarily ignore them completely, but they should be a secondary factor that you use in conjunction with wake windows, wake periods, the amount of time that your little one's been awake for, which is the primary factor that you should be using. So in other words, if you have a 10 month old and you're seeing that your average 10 month old is typically awake for three to three and a half hours and he's rubbing his eyes after an hour and a half of wake time, you're gonna want the wake periods to trump the sleepy sign. So that's one very, very common scenario that I see. Another very common scenario that I see is the complete opposite, where you have a baby who is so darn happy all the time. Anyone relate here? <laughs> Anyone lucky enough to have this problem? Uh, because if you are, listen, it's a very good problem to have. I'm not taking away. Having a really happy baby who, no matter how tired she is, is just constantly smiling, is a, is a blessing. However, it, it means that there's a good chance that she could be misleading you into thinking, into, in, into making you think that she's not tired when she really is. You see, not all babies give us clear tired signs. Some do not give us any kind of indication that they need to go to sleep until they are so overtired that you have no idea what just hit you. So some of these babies, when they're already majorly overtired, will begin to show you very faint sleepy cues, which for them means they're overtired. Some will go from zero to 10 where they're happy, 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 happy. And then all of a sudden they just start wailing. They just start falling apart. It's like they literally just collapsed within 30 seconds. So you want to avoid both of those scenarios completely because at the end of the day, you're going to get the exact same result, which is an overtired baby likely is going to lead to a short nap, is likely going to lead to her fighting bedtime, can lead to night wakings, can lead to early rising, and so once again, this is when you want to ignore the body language and look at what age appropriate wake windows are for your little one. So if your six month old is literally smiling and happy all day long, but you're seeing, hey, you know what? She should really be sleeping approximately every two to two and a half hours, then that's the main factor that you want to be looking at. Don't wait for her to show you that she's tired because you could be waiting a very long time and it can easily end up backfiring. So the moral of the story here, people, is that sleepy cues, I'm not saying are not important, um, but they should be used as a secondary factor to determine sleep times and nap times for your little one. Pay much closer attention to wake windows because those are going to lead you on a much better direction than just waiting for your little one to give you those signs. So I hope this was helpful and that you guys all have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.